One of the biggest memes and theories within the fandom of Black Clover is that Yami is an isekai character from a different world, and that he was already a main character of his own story. This is because he really does feel like he used to be a main character, he has some near fourth wall breaking quotes, like saying he would sue Patri for copyright infringement, and we know that he came from a different world and has been not been able to go back. Which fits a very common mold of an isekai story where a character gets lost into a fantasy world. I made a theory trying to alter this popular fan theory a few months ago, where I brought up the Norse influences in the story and postulated that Yami might actually be from a different world. But that world is just a different realm, like the Nine Realms in Norse mythology. But I actually found some evidence that further builds upon this meme theory and adds credence to it, and that is what I'm going to be talking about in today's theory. Now, what made me realize this theory as a possibility is that I realized that it, in the canon of Black Clover, we never once see Yami use his dark magic prior to that of getting a grimoire, and based on the context of the scene where he got his grimoire, it hints that he didn't have magic prior to receiving the Clover grimoire. And, based on this, it might be that because he had no magic, he is from a different world, but when he got his own grimoire, it activated it. We know that this is a possibility to happen with people without magic getting theirs activated by receiving a grimoire. As Sister Lily told Asta that when he would get his grimoire, and that would awaken his inner magic power. So I want to go over these scenes in depth and try and convince you that it actually is possible that Yami is an Isekai character, but funnily enough, not actually being the main character. Before going over the actual evidence, I find it best to explain why he actually fits the perfect archetype of an Isekai character. Of course, the mainstay of an Isekai character is that they are leaving one world and going into the next, and usually it is not their choice. Yami left the Land of the Sun and accidentally arrived in the Clover Kingdom. This was thanks to a shipwreck where he woke up washed ashore in the Clover. This is similar to other common Isekai tropes, a plane crash, near-death experiences, wormholes, etc. Somehow, Yami ended up in a new world. Not only that, but Yami has followed the archetypal path of an Isekai character that might actually lead to an amazing moment in the series that would be so sad. So he started off as a kid who was treated poorly for being different and living in quite a different culture, but because of this it forced him to grow strong and he beat everybody up. He then joined the Order of the Good Guys, the Magic Knights, and rose the ranks quickly, becoming a vice captain rapidly and then becoming the captain of his own squad. The captain being the second highest rank in the Order of the Magic Knights, this would be the end of a character arc in a conventional Isekai series though the other types of endings are returning to their own world, which might happen this arc. Like I said, it would be amazing, but also sad. The Land of the Sun may not be what we think, and it's just a bland, boring Land of the Sun that isn't in a fantasy setting. But William's world tree magic is the Yggdrasil that connects the realms. This is how I predicted that the reason for the Dark Triad needing William in the first place. As far as arcane world tree magic, its connection to Yggdrasil, Yggdrasil connects all the spaces of all the realms together in Norse mythology. If the world tree magic connects the realms, and the ritual is altered or stopped, Yami might be sent back to his own homeland, officially ending his overall story as an isekai character. Yami also has near fourth wall breaks when he says he's going to sue for copyright infringement, and when he predicts that he is going to surpass his limits, which is a very common trope for an isekai character, always surpassing their limits when the time is right. And also very common for isekai characters to take something from their own world and apply it to their new fantasy world. Yami does this with Ki and his katana. But what I believe to be one of the biggest points to this theory is that throughout the canon of the manga, we never see Yami use dark magic until after he receives his grimoire from the Clover Tower. Reading the context clues of the scene, it really makes me think that Yami did not have magic prior to this occurrence. I'm going to go over the scene with you to show my point concretely, but before, I want to say, if you're still watching this video, that means you definitely like it, so drop a like down below. And if you're still here, you should subscribe if you're not, and also turn notifications because YouTube doesn't really uh, send out stuff anymore unless if you're notified. I don't know why a subscriber number is even a thing anymore, because they're pretty useless. Anyways, you can also follow me on Twitter or join my Discord down below. And with that being said, let's get back to the video. So again, I said let's go over the scene of Yami first getting his grimoire, and this is from Julius's perspective as he was watching him in disguise the entire time. The kids say, I hear he is not from the Clover Kingdom. He's a castaway from a foreign land, and he lives on the coast by himself. He's got mean eyes. He looks kind of dangerous. I wish he'd leave this country. Then Yami's grimoire approaches him. You're kidding. Why does some guy from another country get a grimoire? I bet his magic is worthless. Let's get rid of him with our magic later. Then Yami faces them as the dark magic appears from his hand. What is that magic? That's really creepy. 
The children would then run away from our Chad, soon to be captain. Now this scene really is interesting. We have to remember that Yami has a 5 out of 5 in mana amount, and thus these kids should be able to sense the immense presence of his mana. But they don't. They just assume that his magic will be worthless. Also, they are wondering what his magic is. But children use their magic prior to getting grimoires. So why is it such a mystery if Yami should be able to use dark magic before attaining his grimoire? Then, when Yami opens his grimoire, he uses it in a very basic practice, just letting the dark magic flow from him as if it's the first time getting his power. Again, it's almost looking like a scene of someone just gaining a newfound power. Then, after this, Julius would confront Yami and fanboy over him having dark magic and being shocked and excited. But we know, based on the added context of the anime, the scene took place from Julius' perspective and it did take place at different times, meaning he was the one that was watching all this happen and listening to the conversations. And also, it means he was watching Yami and did not know that he had dark magic until Yami got his grimoire. We know this because Julius stated that he was watching while in his disguise. Now again, that adds several weird discrepancies here. Yami not showing the use of dark magic until he gets his grimoire. The other children thinking his magic will be useless despite him having more mana than some royals in the, in the canon of the story. He has more mana than royals like Leopold and nobles like Longris. Julius only realizing that he had dark magic until after he got his grimoire, even though he confronted William before he had a grimoire, and we see William using his magic, the world tree magic, multiple times in these flashbacks. Even though he was just 8 years old, we see him using his powerful and arcane world tree magic. Why would Tabata choose to never show Yami's pre-Grimoire dark magic? I think it might be because people don't have mana from Yami's world, and like how Lily thought getting a Grimoire would awaken the vacant mana with an Asta. This is actually what happened to Yami instead. In my opinion, it really does add up quite well, because if he has a huge amount of mana, pairing that with his physical strength and katana, then he would have been a huge threat to the other boys, even if his attribute was quite weak. Again, this scene portrays this as an awakening and a reveal but we know that people know their magic type long before they get their grimoires. Now sadly, possibly, there is one possibly damning debunk of this theory, and that is that in the game Black Clover Quartet Knights, as well as the manga adaptation, Yami uses his dark magic without having his grimoire when he's a kid. This is shown many different times throughout the game, but this game also is not canon. Still though, like, even if it is not canon, it would be weird to have a manga canon Yami not able to use his magic until getting a grimoire, and then game canon Yami, able to use his dark magic and mana. So the fact that this game really does throw me off, but there is already a bunch of weird stuff in this game, so I will leave this as a possible theory, but something that probably won't turn out to be true. And overall, that is the basically the baseline of this theory. You have him following the archetypal, archetypal path of a Isagai character, and then his magic circumstance is weird. It almost in that context of the scene is like that is the first time he's using his magic. So I find that very interesting because again, he has a 5 out of 5 in mana amount. That's more than some royals and most nobles, yet they think that no matter what attribute he's going to unlock, he's going to be weak. It might just, he didn't have magic at the time. They assumed it was so low because that's what they happened with Asta. People just thought he had extremely low magic, not no magic. And then when he got it, it awakened his inner power, and that's because he's from a different world. He is an isekai character. So let me know your thoughts of this theory down below. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy. And turn on notifications. You can also join my Discord and follow me on Twitter. And as you've probably seen on my community tab, I am revealing characters from my series coming out. I'm writing a light novel series. So far, I've revealed the main character, Sigmund, and his brother, Thamael. And I will be releasing new characters every other day until basically cover is out, and then I believe a week after that, I will start releasing the chapters. I'm, I have the story, what I have written so far, and then I'm just creating a website. So this will be a completely free to read light novel for you guys to read. I will release chapters weekly. Basically what I'm gonna do is the, chat, the, the website will go live, it'll have three chapters on it, and then from then on out, every single week, I'll release a new chapter for that series, and then every other week, I'll release two chapters with that secondary chapter is a one-shot story that takes place within the universe of Nine Fates. So pay attention to the community tab and probably Sunday's video, I will talk a lot more about Nine Fates and the actual plot because by then all the characters will be revealed and the cover will be revealed as well. So stay tuned for that. I will also have physical copies at some point once the first arc is done. So if you'd like to support the actual series and then have a physical copy of it, that will be somewhere down the line. But with that being said, that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts down below. Plus...